Welcome Westside, would you join us in singing today? We're gonna lift up the name of Jesus together. Let's sing worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. In Jesus' the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Sing holy. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up. our hearts to you now. You sing your name, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. You are worthy, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Open up my eyes and wonder and show. 
space for prayer. Right where you are in your home, um, I want you to just create a space to be able to pray. And I want us to visualize not just in our home, but all over the city, lifting our prayers to the Lord. And this is what I want us to pray. You know, we come into the Lord's presence with thanksgiving, and that breaks the soil of our hearts open, and it softens our hearts to Him, and that's why we sing right now we also acknowledge that our city is in a time of need and these are just kind of like unusual times for a lot of people and so as a church we're going to stand up today and we're going to pray on behalf of our city we're going to look to the Lord and we're going to ask him that he would comfort those who are dealing with fear and anxiety and depression that he would give hope to those who have financial needs that he would be with those who are responding on the front lines of what we've been dealing with. That he would bring just healing where there's been division in our culture and our society. So we're just going to open up for about 30 seconds here. And right where you are out loud, I'd like you to pray. If there was one thing specifically that I just listed that really resonated with your heart, if there's something else that the Spirit would just put on your heart right now. All together we're in one voice. We're going to pray together right now, church. Here we go. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your salvation. Lord, as we sing these words, we just believe that there is power in the name of Jesus. Whatever the thing is that we're facing right now, that Jesus, you have already overcome. Let's sing together. There is power in the name of Jesus. Let faith rise. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yes, there is power, there is power.
circumstances we find ourselves in just gives life just gives hope to worship you just brings freedom so I ask that as we continue in our gathering today that you would just show us more of who you are more of what that means for where we are right now we pray this all God's people together in Jesus name Hey, Westside, 
Thanks for being here today, joining us from your homes. It is such a gift that we can gather online even when we're at a distance. And last week as we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday, what a great example of that as so many people were joining us online and posting photos, especially kids. We loved seeing your pictures, uh, your drawings as Pastor Steve asked uh, the kids to draw and post those. Um, some very interesting uh, portraits of your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. It is such a gift that we have this community during this time. And we want to continue to be a church for the city, even during this crisis and this closure. And one of the ways we're doing that is through our food distribution events. We have another one coming up in about a week. And so tomorrow, which is Monday from nine to three, we wanna invite you, if you're able, to bring pantry items, cleaning supplies, um, as well as toiletries to the church parking lot for a drop off from nine to three tomorrow as we prepare for a week out our food distribution event. Um, well, you know, it's through your generosity that has continued and, and continues to be strong through this time that we're able to be so generous with our community and those in need. And so as today we give, um, you can go to westsidechurch.org slash give or those on westsidelive.org. There's a button up on the top right. Um, we know that it is through your generosity and your faith through giving uh, that we are able to continue to be this church for the city. Um, and so as we prepare to give, let me pray. Lord, we thank you that um, we have this community. In this time of separation and sometimes isolation, we are grateful for the community of faith that we find ourselves in. And so God, as we give, we would just ask God that these gifts um, would be just a lifeline to those in need, especially in this community during this crisis. Uh, we give this to you and we do this in faith. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, hi everyone, it's great to be joining you today online again. Anybody getting tired of this yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, though, that we were able to uh, gather like this together uh, in community. And uh, I'm so proud of our church. How we've responded during this crisis um, is amazing. I'm going to share a few things about that uh, a little bit uh, later. You know, the life and love of Jesus expands, not just in spite of barriers, often because of barriers. Uh, the next three weeks, we're going to be looking into the book of Acts. It's actually a second book to the book of Luke, which we've spent the last 10 weeks studying. And so we're going to take three more weeks and dive into the second volume of Luke's works in the book of Acts. Uh, along with that, we have a daily devotional uh, that we started last week. I hope you can connect with that. You can find it at westsidechurch.org slash read. Um, there's uh, every day, six days of the week, there's a pastor who gives uh, a short devotional on video. And there's a reading plan and some other resources that you can uh, connect uh, together uh, through the book of Acts over these uh, next 20 days or so. So to, today and really through this series, I want to I talk about how did the life and love of Jesus, the gospel, flourish in the midst of adverse circumstances? And then also I want to apply that to our lives. So how do we then um, see the gospel of Jesus expand through our lives, through, um, through the life of our church in the midst of these adverse circumstances? Well, in Acts chapter 1, we're going to start right from the beginning. If you have a Bible, go ahead and grab it. Uh, you can online, there's Bibles available. version is a great app as well. Um, and in Acts chapter 1, Luke writes these words uh, as a second volume to his uh, his first book. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself uh, alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. So he, after Jesus rose from the dead, he spent 40 more days after that um, talking with the disciples, reconnecting with them. Uh, uh, Paul writes later that it was, it was over 500 people that he actually connected with during those 40 days. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? That's what they've been waiting for from the beginning. And he said to them this, 
It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And Jesus is saying, listen, I know you're going to be worrying about times and seasons like when am I coming back? What's going to be happening in the end days? All of those questions that even some of us have today, right? But that's the, those are the things that we should not concern ourselves with. More so, we should be asking the Holy Spirit to empower us to be his witnesses. So after Jesus said these words, he went back to heaven and the disciples gathered together. They chose Matthias, who was to replace Judas, the one that betrayed Jesus. Um, and then they were up in the upper room. They were in prayer together. And then when the, in chapter two, verse one, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven, say suddenly. I, I couldn't hear you. Sorry, little online joke there. Uh, just wanted to add that in there. Um, you're probably not laughing either. You didn't say suddenly and you're not laughing now. Anyways, let's keep going. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then from that point on, they started to scatter. They started to share the gospel wherever they went. Peter preached one of his, arguably one of his best sermons that he ever preached in his entire life. And 3,000 souls came to know Jesus and were baptized that same day. Chapters two through four then describe the expansion of the gospel in these first few days of the early church. And both chapters two and chapters four end with great unity among the church. Unity is described as they were of one heart and one mind. Signs and wonders were being done uh, by the uh, followers of Jesus. Gatherings in homes and small groups and temples. Um, uh, the church was growing rapidly. Every day, more and more people came to know Jesus. What started at Pentecost with just a few hundred believers was now in the thousands. Truly nothing like this had ever happened before. This was a brand new thing that God was doing. So what about us? What does this historical narrative that we'll look through in the book of Acts mean to us right now in the midst of this pandemic? What, what I'm hearing a lot lately is about getting back to normal. There's this desire that I have, and I'm sure that you have, of wanting to get back, get things back to normal. And it'll be great. Listen, it'll be great when the quarantine is over. I, I can't, I, I'll be the first one like celebrating that. But I've been thinking and praying a lot about what getting back to normal might mean for us, for our church. And I sense this. I sense the Lord saying this to us. I don't want you to go back to normal. I don't want my church to return to what it was. And as he's speaking this to me, I'm like, okay, what does that mean? You know, there will always be, there will always be a strong pull back to what we're used to. It's like, it's like, it's like we're rubber bands, right? And, the, and we get stretched in the tension that we're experiencing right now. And as soon as the tension is relieved, we go right back to the way we live. We saw this at 9-11. We were stretched and stretched and stretched. And then as soon as a, a few days, a couple weeks later, we start to go back to our routines, what was normal, our habits, our comfort zones, our need for security. All of this pulls us back to normal. But God wants to do a new thing among us. So I've been asking Jesus, what is that? What do you want us to become? What's the new thing that you're wanting to do in us and in our community of faith? And three things uh, that came to mind initially. There will be other things as we continue through this series, but here are the three things that I want to talk about today. One is we gather to scatter. Two, we connect for community. And three, we walk the talk. First, we gather to scatter. Evan, Pastor Evan, last week during his devotional uh, in the book of Acts, shared about this, he used this phrase, gather to scatter. And I absolutely loved it. I thought immediately I'm gonna use that on Sunday. It could actually be the thesis for the church in the book of Acts. They gathered as often as they could. They gathered in homes, they gathered in the temple, uh, they got, and then God scattered them to their neighbors, uh, to those who didn't look the same, act the same, eat the same, think the same, believe the same. 
And, and for us, Sundays have been the primary place that we have gathered for decades. And I'm excited about being able to gather again. I, I, it's getting a little harder to speak to an empty room. I'll be honest with you, right? So I, I can't wait to do that. But I'm also deeply concerned that we will go back to Sundays being the only expression of our spiritual lives. Over a year ago, I shared a vision that God had given me about the waters of the Deschutes River rising and flooding and, and overflowing the banks of the river and that the waters would, be, would go ev into every aspect of society. There would be no place or no people left untouched by the waters of life, government, schools, um, neighborhoods, homes, everywhere that you could just see water everywhere. And Jesus said that out of you and out of me, out of you and me, rivers of living water will flow from us. Abundance. That's what Jesus wants to do. And I see more people coming to know Jesus and becoming like Jesus outside of Sunday service than inside of Sunday services. And here we are. We don't even have our normal Sunday services anymore. Now's the time. Now's the time to tell people your story. Your story from darkness to light. Your story from being lost to found. Your story from being blind to now I see. How has Jesus transformed your life? How is he transforming your life right now? Tell somebody. Tell somebody this week. Share your story. It could be something of, uh, that God is teaching you in this season or ways that God has met you in the midst of these uncertain times. The power of storytelling. It tells people we're not alone. We're in this together. And there's a hunger for spiritual things right now. Let's not waste this moment, church. It's not time for us to bring judgment or condemnation on the world. It's time to share the good news that Jesus has saved me, that Jesus is transforming me, that Jesus is walking with me and caring for me. Tomorrow's devotion is in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8. It's one of my favorite chapters in the entire Bible. And it tells the story of the good news being shared. And it brought great joy to a city in Samaria and to an Ethiopian eunuch. Listen, the good news of your story, of what Jesus has done in your life, that has captured your heart and changed your life, will bring someone great joy this week. Let's share our story. We gather to scatter. The second thing I see is that we connect for community. For many, Sundays have been the only time that they connect with other Christians. And we've been fine with that. It's like, that's, we've been okay with that. But this quarantine season, I don't know about you, but it has shown me that how much I need others, how much we need each other. When my family uh, lived in Croatia for a few years, it was just a, a couple years after the Yugoslav War, and it, it taught us how hardship can create community. For far too long, we in our country especially, we thought, I can do it on my own. I don't need anybody else. Let's not go back to that mindset. We need each other. Our, 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 our asking our, 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 of our dependence on one another is a strength, not a weakness. There's so many easy on-ramps right now to connect in community. Uh, we have a men's uh, fuel group. It's called Fuel. It's a small group of men that meet on Thursday mornings. They're doing it via Zoom right now. It's open to any man that would like to be involved in that. Women's Bible study is happening online right now. You can jump into that. Uh, Better Together, our marriage ministry is, is starting up this week or next week, I, I believe. Um, and that's going to be online. Celebrate Recovery uh, is online as well. Our young adults, our youth, our children are connecting and creating ways uh, through Zoom groups, um, th through worship, uh, through Instagram, uh, preachings happening, live chats with leaders, um, Meme Monday. They got something called Meme Monday. Like, you, you, you know, even if you're not a young adult, youth or child, you should get involved in these things because they're pretty great. Um, there's I actually heard a story this last week about an Xbox Live group that one of our leaders was doing with a, a group of young, of young men in our youth group. And one, one kid who's been part of our youth group for a couple of years um, had come to church services and was really quiet and just never opened up. And once you believe that while they're gaming, he starts to talk about his life. He starts to open up his heart about his struggles and his temptations. Because, I mean, listen, there's, God's doing something new. 
And, 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 and West Side is right in the middle of it. I heard about a West Side who's working on coaching, uh, creating a coaching line for parents who feel overwhelmed. <laughs> that would be every parent, I think. Uh, the, the, the people are wanting to connect in community. Don't wait until after the quarantine is over to connect. We'll just go, listen, we'll just go back to the way it was. We'll just, we'll just snap back to being busy and trying to do life on our own. We can create a culture right now in our faith community where we, we're asking for help doesn't bring shame. A not afraid to ask for help kind of culture because we're in this together. By the way, most likely small groups will be able to gather together physically before we can do that in a room that seats 800 people, right? And so I think this is a gift to us. Because we're going to be able to see the church as more than just the Sunday gathering, but it's made up of smaller gatherings all over our community, all over this region, all over the world, where we can connect with one another, we can care for each other, we can meet the needs of those around us, we can grow in relationship with God and with each other. So I'm looking for 50 to 100 people in our church community that feel called by God to gather 10 or so people after this quarantine time is over. And maybe that's you. We gather to scatter. We connect for community. And lastly, we walk the talk. <laughs> we walk the talk. We believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We believe that what Jesus did in the first century, he can still do today. We believe that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We believe he came to give life and life more abundant here and now. And we believe that the joy of the Lord is our strength. If we believe those things, it's time to walk out those things. Not after the quarantine, but right now. To live with a confidence that what Jesus began, he will complete. That he's doing a work among us. And that what he did in the first century, he still wants to do today through his church. What does that mean for us? Well, Paul wrote, uh, the Apostle Paul, who came to know Jesus later in his life, he wrote a book to a group of Christians in the city of Corinth. He actually wrote them two books. And the first one, 1 Corinthians, in chapter 2, he writes this. And I, when I came to you, brothers, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. But get this, listen to this. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See this, I'm talking about asking God to flow through us in power today. Power to heal, yes, absolutely. Power to lay hands on the sick and that they be made well. For sure we need to be doing that. But also power to bring joy to our community. Power to speak a word of encouragement that brings someone else hope. This distribution of food that's going to be happening on April 27th will bring hope to people. Our church has helped dozens of families in partnership with Family Access Network. We've sent local coffee shop cars to teachers in our school district and to the fan advocates. A Westsider procured and delivered 10,000 face masks to frontline workers at nursing homes and high-risk establishments. Another Westsider organized a fundraiser for face shields for St. Charles employees. It's not just about helping in physical ways, though. It's also about helping in emotional and spiritual ways. One of the, our council members just last week in our Zoom meeting said that joy right now is a sign and a wonder. <laughs> Having joy in the midst of this pandemic. We can pray. You know, a Westsider sent me a note last week regarding an uncle who is quite ill, and this is what he wrote. Yesterday, our family decided to put out a call for prayer on social media. We set it for tonight at 8 p.m. and we have been shocked by the response as over 900 people have shared the post and thousands have responded to pray for him. As I was praying last night, God opened my eyes to the fact that many of the thousands that are praying have no relationship with God. With no relationship, they are calling out for, to God for healing. It's just absolutely amazing what God is doing in this moment. This pandemic has caused a hunger and a desperation for an authentic move of God in our kids, in our city, in our own homes, in our world. 
So we have opportunities right now to pray for the sick. Even if we can't lay hands on them, we have the power to pray. We have the power to speak words of life through social media and Zoom meetings to be voices of hope and salvation to our world that desperately needs it right now. Well, let me wrap this up. God wants to do a new thing. Not once we get through this, but while we're getting through it. So what will you do this week? Will you share your story? Will you share your story, the good news of Jesus, of how he is transforming your life, how he is walking with you, how, is he, how he is giving you the strength and the wisdom to navigate this season? Will you share your story with someone this week? Will you connect in one of the many ways people are gathering digitally? Or maybe you're one of those 50 to 100 that I'm asking for that can create community around you. Will you be bold this week to pray for someone who is sick, to speak a word of encouragement and hope to someone who needs to hear it? See, the book of Acts it will challenge all of us to be present and engaged in what God is doing right now. In whatever season we find ourselves in. He's, he's doing the heavy lifting, by the way. He's the one that does the work. But will we allow our lives to be a part of what he's doing? Church, let's not go back to the way it was. Let Jesus do a new work in you and in me in this season. God has positioned us for this moment. We, we may be the most aligned that we've ever been with the book of Acts. This is a defining moment, not just for our society, but also for his church. So Jesus, we thank you that your word brings life. We thank you, Jesus, that you came you died and you rose again, giving us the Holy Spirit, empowering us to be your church, to be your representatives. So Lord, as we're scattered in this moment, would you help us to be intentional about sharing our story? Give us boldness and courage by your Holy Spirit. Help us to, to pray for those who are sick and expect them to be made well. Help us to share a word of encouragement and life. Jesus, help us to connect in community even in these unique expressions right now in this season. And Jesus, help us to not go back to Sundays being the only representation of our spiritual life, of our relationship with you. Help our relationship with you begin to, to, to make its way into every aspect of our lives. And may your kingdom come here, right now, as it is in heaven. We love you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, prayer teams are available online. There's someone that would love to pray with you. If you have a prayer need, just go ahead and mention in the chat box somewhere, I would like prayer and they will guide you through that. Devotions tomorrow morning. Even if you didn't start last week, you can jump in right now. Acts chapter eight is tomorrow morning. Uh, you can see that on our Facebook or Instagram page. You can also get on westsidechurch.org and there are plentiful resources available for, to help you connect, to even to help you serve in this season. I hope you can check that out. Love you guys. So great to connect in this way. Um, we'll see you online this week and next Sunday. God bless.